Oh, actually, and Betty, I better tell you right now, we're doing this in English, so I think you know it's in English, right? Oh, hello, everybody. My name is Prof. Kyle, and in front of me, I have one of my former students. Who knows? Maybe she'll be my student again, but she's a very busy lady, so she can't always take classes because she's always busy. Uh, this is Betty. She's from Mexico. Betty, how are you? Hi, everybody. I'm Betty. I'm from Mexico. I'm really happy uh, because I'm talking with my prof. Kyle, my favorite prof. Kyle. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good answer. I'm always glad to talk to my students. All right. Well, Betty, like we usually do with these interviews, I want people to get to know you because you know Latinos. Latinos like to make a connection with people. They don't want the cold, hard facts. They want a connection. So I guess, Betty, so you're from Mexico. Uh, I don't know, tell us a little, bit, a little bit about yourself. So you're from Mexico. Uh, you're very busy. So yeah, what's your job? Because for, from my knowledge, you have like two jobs, right? Am I right? Yes, in Mexico, I have two, two jobs. Uh, one of them is a project manager in an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. uh, we work for uh, some brands like Pepsi, Gatorade, and some local brands. Mm -hmm. And my other job is uh, administrative in a hospital. Mm -hmm. So I work every day, <laughs> every week. <laughs> yeah, it seems like. Yes. For me, I always thought it was crazy, but I think I asked you once why you have two jobs. And I think you just said, because you like to work and yeah, you like, I think it's like, you like to work, right? Now why explain to us, why do you have two jobs? Cause also maybe not a well-known fact, Mexicans are some of the hardest working people in the world. I saw some statistics and I think Mexico's at the top one, at the top of the list for hardest working people. So. Yeah, why? Why do you have two jobs? Explain to the people who might be might think you're crazy. Mm, I think yes, I like to work, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's because I started to work uh, early, like uh, maybe twenty years old. So oh, was that early? Uh, Actually, that seems kind of old for for gringos, okay, but for Mexico. Oh yes, kinda... yes. <laughs> okay, In Mexico, yeah. is very it's young, young for yeah? okay. for you. All right. Yeah. But um, yeah, I like and. Uh, I think it's um, nice because when I have, when I, um, when I was, I, I forgot, <laughs> when I was uh, 20 years uh -huh. old, I, I studied. So okay. I like, I like it to study and to work at the same time. So okay. now I am really, um, addicted, really, addicted to work. Yes, yes. Okay. It's, it's my life now yeah. work and what well, well i'm curious i don't think i ever asked you this but i did because sometimes it's the parents i like, did your parents did they really want you to work or did you because i know with many latin american parents they will say to somebody like you like betty don't worry focus on school we'll pay for everything i'll i will work two jobs your father will work two jobs don't worry about work get the best grades focus on classes or were your parents a bit more gringo and they said, Betty, if you're going to school, you gotta work? Mm, no, my, my parents, uh, I think uh, they like, um, look at me, uh, enjoy my job and yeah. enjoy my, my school. So mm -hmm. uh, they always um, said me, uh, Go and do everything you want. <laughs> yes, yeah, do and, do whatever you want. Uh, we we don't yes. we support you. If okay. you're happy, go and do yeah. do it. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. All yeah. right. So Betty works two jobs. So she's a very busy lady. I was always surprised that Betty was able to take classes with me. All right. And now I guess a bit more of a personal. You recently really got married right when did you get married you got married eight months ago i can't remember you told me you were in class and you told me you got married actually i didn't even know i remember i think we were in class i had i didn't even know you had a boyfriend or a fiance and then you told the class oh yeah i got married a week ago or something like that i, was like, oh, I had no idea yes um i did, got married um 10 months ago mm -hmm. and my boyfriend well, now is my husband, but husband. Uh, we have a relationship of uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, how old are you right now? Um my years old. Yeah, how old yeah, how old are you? Yeah. Uh I'm in, uh 31 years old. 31? Oh well, yeah. But you're Latina. Latinas always look young. Yeah. I'm always jealous. I'm always jealous <laughs> of Latinas. Yeah. Betty looks like she's 22 or 23 and she's actually oh, 31. Thank you. <laughs> so you've been dating your boyfriend then since you were in, was it oh what'd you say 10 years or eight how long how long have you been dating your well how long you've been with your husband uh, sorry i, I how long um, yeah how long have you been with your husband because you did you say 10 years I, I, 10 I years yes okay so ten that's years. since you were 21, 21. years old oh, yes okay. now where where did you meet your husband did you meet him at university or did you meet him at work uh he was um friend of my sister oh yes classic so, latino friend of a friend no yes, yes. yes all right exactly. <laughs> friend of your sister is he older the same age or younger than you uh he's older only two years two years older, okay, older so than me yes. 33 years old okay and mm -hmm. does he like to work as much as you or not as much um i think uh, sometimes he um needs my <laughs> my uh, yes, me. He misses you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Betty, please come home. You don't have to work so much. You don't have to work so much. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> All right, poor guy, poor guy. He loves you so much, he lets you have two jobs. All right, well, good. Uh, I guess that's a good short biography. Oh, and because uh, you live in Mexico City right now, were you born and raised in Mexico City? Yes, I born and raised in Mexico City, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you considered Chilanga? I think Chilangos told me that Chilangos are more from the Estado de Mexico. So you're from, you uh, from the Estado or are you from the city? No, I'm in the Estado. You're in the Estado. So you're Chilanga then, right? You're Chilanga, Chilanga? Yes, I can see. Yes. Okay, thank you. Excellent. All right. Actually, one, another thing I want to talk about was, Betty, you've done some traveling. And of course, lots of Latinos, they learn English because they want to travel. So... I wanted to ask you some questions about your travels because I know you've been to Canada. So first, which country? So, so far until now, which countries have you visited? Uh, I visited uh, Canada. Uh -huh. In Canada, I visited Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa. Oh, and um, England, um, Belgium, and Amsterdam. Belgium. Oh, and so Amsterdam. Well, you visited the city, right? Absolutely. Yes. Netherlands. Okay. So Belgium and the Netherlands. Okay. Mm -hmm. And any, any place else? Did you go to, yeah, you, you went to Britain too. Did, did you go to Britain? Did you go to London? Yes, in London. Okay. okay good. Mm -hmm. All right. That's pretty good. Pretty good. So you've been to some nice countries. I'm pretty sure lots of Latinos want to visit those countries. So out of all the countries you've visited, what's been your favorite so far? Mm, I think my favorite is. Uh, Canada. Really? You chose Canada? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm flattered you chose Canada. Now, why Canada? Why? Why my country? Mm, I think it's because it's very different of Mexico, uh, but good things. Uh, it's clean. The people is nice. Uh, you, you don't feel uh, like uh, dangerous. In danger? No. Danger, danger no. Yeah. Yes, it is nice. Um, mm -hmm. The food is not too good. <laughs> yeah, no, no. no. I agree. I agree, Betty. The food isn't that great. <laughs> yes. Sometimes yes. I criticize food from Colombia, for example, but yeah. I always yeah. tell Colombians, look, Colombian food, even if it's not as good as Mexican food, is still better than Canadian food. Canadian food isn't isn't very good. No. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the 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 people and the culture is is very nice um i like uh, um london but mm -hmm. i think the people in london is a little uh, it's not uh, nice people <laughs> no nice people i drive but... hor or horrible <laughs> <laughs> okay but actually because actually today i was uh, i met up with uh with a british teacher that lives here in bogota so i was talking to her about english people and I think even for her, sometimes British people can be, we call it snobbish. I don't know how to say in Spanish. Uh, I think you guys might say a snob. 
it's like kind of like what the faces, the faces, they uh, mm-hmm. mira por mm-hmm. encima del hombro. So they yes. look down on people. So mm-hmm. I, I think some, especially if they're from London and maybe they have a little bit of money, they're kind of a little bit mm-hmm. look down on people. Is that what you're referring to? Is it more just, it's a big city, people are always moving and they don't really care about other people? Yes, I think it's, it's because uh, the, uh, England, in England, the people uh, walk to job to eat and not, don't see other people. Uh, they don't care other people. I yeah. think it, it's that. Not as friendly. Okay. Wow. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm happy as a Canadian. I'm glad that we're known for being very yes. friendly. The place is very nice for the people. No. no. I prefer Canadian uh, people. Canadian people? Okay, well, that's good. Mm-hmm. You guys heard it here. Canadian people, we are the best. And well, you've been to uh, probably the four major cities in Canada. Well, you went to the capital, Ottawa, and then you went to the three biggest cities, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. Actually, yeah. did you go to all the cities during the same trip or what, did you go different trips to the different cities? Nine different trips. I um then my, my first trip was in Vancouver for 10 days. Mm-hmm. And the next year, I um, I went to Toronto uh, three days and Ottawa two days, Montreal mm-hmm. two days. Okay, and so the short trip. So Vancouver, you yes. spent the most time in Vancouver. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. And did you have a favorite Canadian city? Uh, yes. Yes, okay. I like Oh, yeah. city, which yes. city was your favorite do you have a favorite or no favorites um yes i think it's toronto okay, yeah. my favorite now why toronto is, is big or yeah yeah well, yeah why toronto mm-hmm. yeah toronto is an interesting choice yeah mm, i think it's because uh in that city i see uh all kinds of uh places to visit mm-hmm. uh, malls okay. um nature and Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it's like you can do lots. You can whatever you like. You can do in Toronto if you prefer yes. more um, city yes. stuff, cafes, bars. You can find it if you mm-hmm. want to go to a park, go for a walk. You can find it. You can find anything you want yes. in Toronto. Okay. Yes, and I think the food is better. There. Really? I don't okay. know why. Maybe <laughs> okay. it's my 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 opinion. No, yeah, well, I'm not too sure. I'm from Western Canada, so we don't like Toronto. So I'm going to okay. pretend. <laughs> Betty, I'm going to pretend you didn't say Toronto, but... Okay, <laughs> it's like... Oh, it's okay, it. it's okay. I <laughs> I accept all, all opinions. It's okay. All right, so good. Now people know, have a more of a Mexican perspective about travels. So yeah, Betty recommends Canada. If you're thinking about going someplace, go to Canada. That's a nice place. All right, Betty. Now I guess I can get into a bit more of uh, learning English. So I guess the first thing I should ask you is, yeah, when, when did you start learning English? uh when yeah when mm. did you start like in elementary school did you start in high school when did you start learning english uh let me let me remember in i think in in high school high school okay it seems kind of yes. late is it normal mexico or yes. has it changed since you were in high school uh in elementary school we uh we have uh some classes but it's not too nice it's bad really Really. so seriously i started in high school okay but yeah so seriously so does that mean that you like you studied it because you want to study it or you studied it because the school said you need to study english seriously uh because the school uh just saying you have to study but Mm -hmm. good (laughs) with yeah. uh, nice uh, nice books and nice uh-huh. uh, teachers okay so so they forced you they forced you to study english yes <laughs> and yeah i know how were how were the classes in high school did you like them or did you not like them not too much i i think it's because um i don't know why but um the english is difficult for me so mm-hmm. when before of your classes of mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, sometimes I studied French in, mm-hmm. instead of English because I don't like English, but because it's <laughs> okay, diff- yeah. it was difficult yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. So I don't like. 
Mm -hmm. But uh, then um, for my job, mm -hmm. I forced me uh, to learn English because okay. it's important. Yeah. And well, because you said you didn't like English, did you not like English because just the language you didn't like, or was it? Because, for example, when I was in university, I, I took lots of French classes and I I hated my French classes because the French classes, they always they always really focused on grammar. And of course, in my Spanish classes, they also focused on grammar, but it was a little bit more fun. The teachers were from Brazil, Mexico, and they're a little bit more outgoing. And the French teachers were very nerdy and academic. And yeah, they didn't really make me love France that much. Uh, was it the same for you or was it the teachers were really boring for English and the French teachers were better? Or was it just because you preferred French language more than you preferred English language? Mm, I prefer French uh, because I think it's more uh, more fun, I don't know. Yeah, it's fun. More okay. interesting. The okay. uh, yes, I think it is that the the noise is nice to, to listen. To listen. To. Yes, yeah. right. uh, but English is is the language is good. It's nice. I like it. But the teachers uh, always um, were boring, and yeah. I don't like that because I don't. Yeah, yeah, of course. Nobody wants to be bored in class. Yes. Right. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I admit the French language does sound a lot of fun. It sounds it's nice to hear and nice yeah. to try to speak it with a fun French accent. Well, because actually you bit oh no, but you went to Belgium because they speak French in Belgium, right? Um yes, some yeah. yes. so did when you went to Belgium, did you practice your French or no, not really. I'm not really. <laughs> no. and do you do you still study French or not anymore? Uh, no, 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 no anymore. Okay. No, I past. focus on English. Because... Focus on English. Okay. Good choice. Yeah. Even though French is funner. French, <laughs> French people. Yeah, I know. French. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Western Canada, so we don't like people from Toronto, and we don't like French people. Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's what, that's what we believe in my province. So good choice. Good choice, Betty. Focus on English. All right. And when you went to university, did you also study English in university or was it not required in your university? Uh, no, I studied French, actually. Oh, you studied French? University. University. Okay. <laughs> yes, right. my, um, bad choice. But... <laughs> bad choice, okay. <laughs> so, sometimes you do things for passion. You're passionate about French. Yes. So you studied English in high school. You studied French in university. Yes. So you didn't study any English in university, no English at all? No, no, English, really? okay. Well, and how many, how long did you spend in university? Because you have two jobs. So did you do like a double degree? Did you study for six years? How long did you study in university? Um, uh, for five years. But five I finished years. in uh, 2012, I think. Yeah, well, yeah, we're the same age. So I finished about the same time too, university, okay. Uh, all right and so yeah no english in in university so all the english you learned until then was from high school after university did you start taking classes somewhere else or no classes after university uh yes um some years ago uh my boss uh, yes my my boss knows a teacher an english teacher um and he was my teacher, but he he was not a good teacher. Um, I, I learned uh, yeah. more things, but not too much. Was it a Mexican teacher? Was it a Canadian teacher? Where was where was, it, where was the uh, teacher from? I think he was in the United States. United States. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess that's one thing I always tell people is. You can learn English from anybody as long as it's something in English you're going to learn. But the big difference is, are you going to learn fast or are you going to learn slow? Because yeah, any, you know, you can learn English from Duolingo, but I don't know, is it the best way to learn English? Well, probably not. But you are going to learn English. All right. 
So you had, how long did you have that teacher for? Was it a private teacher that you Yes, took a private from? teacher, yes. Okay, and how long uh, did you study with him? Then, um, I think, well, seven months. Seven months, or less. okay. Yes. All right, seven months. And then after that, more English or no English classes until you started taking classes with me? Yes, uh, after, after him, mm -hmm. I started in, uh, the English classes with you. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. But yes, because yeah, you graduated in 2012, then seven months. So actually, wow, it's pretty impressive, Betty, because you only studied English a bit in high school. Then you studied for seven months after university. And then you start taking classes with me. So that's really not that long. You haven't been studying English that long. So it's pretty good. Your progress is pretty impressive. Pretty impressive for sure. All right. So I guess we can get to the, the best part for me, talking about myself. Everybody loves talking about themselves, right? So yeah. you found, well, first, how, how did you find me? Did you find me on social media? Did somebody recommend me to you? How did you find me? Yes, I find you in social media, in Instagram. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so just luckily you found me. And did you immediately want to take classes or did you wait a bit? Well, what made you decide that you wanted to take classes with me? Uh, I remember that I find you in Instagram and mm -hmm. then I see that you have um, videos in YouTube. Okay. So I watched a lot of videos in YouTube okay. and I, I noticed uh, your English was uh, a very uh, nice for my ears. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like, I, I understand more. It's like French. It's like French for you. Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. okay. <laughs> yes I, I understand. I understood uh, more uh, mm -hmm. in comparison of other people. Okay. So I, I thought uh, maybe it's the best choice for mm -hmm. to understand and to practice and probably mm -hmm. to take a course. Okay. Uh, Yes, it was everything. All right. Yeah. So, so from the point that you found me to the point that you started taking classes with me, was that like one month, two months? How, how long? Mm -hmm. How long after you started following me did you decide you want to take classes? Mm -hmm. Less of one month, maybe one, okay. uh, twenty days or something. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and so, for you at that time, what was the what was the biggest challenge? For you with English, was it uh, speaking? Was it listening? Was it was it everything? What What were some of the biggest challenges you had with learning English? Uh, I think it's, it's speaking because yeah. uh, uh, before of your classes was everything <laughs> to yeah, listen, okay. to speaking, yeah. to everything. Yeah. But now um, I think it's uh, to listen. Uh, sorry, the to speaking because okay. uh, I think I need more vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to listen more, but now I understand almost everything mm -hmm. you said or in series or in TV. Yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. almost everything. So okay, well, yeah, nice yeah, for me. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, a lot less problems yeah. for sure. Much easier to to learn to to watch shows and movies that you can understand almost yeah. everything. All right, yes. and so you started taking class with me. You were having problems with almost everything in English, and now, of course, when people start classes with me, they, they know it's going to be different, but they don't know how it's going to be different. So for you, what was the biggest surprise when you started taking classes? What was the thing that, that surprised you the most about the Profe Kyle methodology? Um, the biggest surprise was um, uh, that you are really uh, care of the students and you know the culture the latin culture you know uh, a lot of things of mexicans of colombians of everything. and when when you talk about uh, when you live some months in some countries in mm -hmm. latin america i like i like because you understand uh, you understand us <laughs> uh, yes and no, no know the language mm -hmm. and the culture so yeah. that was very nice because uh, uh, yes 
I, I, feel, I felt that I was talking with uh, another people who knows my culture. Yeah, that, that understands you. Like, so yeah, it's like, obviously you understand that I'm not Latino. I'm not from Latin America, but at the same time, as a Canadian, I do a, a decent job of trying to connect with this, your guys' culture. Yes. And yeah, for me, it helps the methodology because if I understand the culture and the language, it's easier for me to teach you guys and easier for you guys to learn if I can explain things from uh, your perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Good. So yeah. So what's good to know? I I always kind of expect people to say something about the methodology, but yeah, actually, a few people have told me, "Yeah, no, it's just you understand what's going on in my brain. That's that's the biggest thing. It helps. It helps that you understand me." Yeah. All right. Now, well, I guess for people watching this, so in my classes and with my self-learning courses too with everything that I do I usually have a mixture of listening speaking pronunciation uh, reading just a mixture of everything um, but of course for with each student different things improve and now you told me that you were having problems with everything before the classes and then now you only really have problems with speaking and that's really just a matter of practice as you guys say in Spanish was it the uh, La práctica hace la maestra. What was that? Yes. Yeah, that, you know, mm -hmm. that dicho. Yeah, exactly. So what was the biggest thing for you personally? What was the biggest thing that improved in the classes? Was the or maybe what was the first major improvement you saw uh, from taking classes with me? Um, um I think uh, it was when I understand more and more and I'm thinking in English. Yeah. So that, yeah, you weren't thinking as much in Spanish. And then also mm -hmm. when you were listening, you were able to understand what native speakers were saying when they were speaking to you or you're watching a movie or a TV show in English. Uh when I see uh, TV show. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understood a lot more. Yeah. Yes. Well, and actually, I've asked a few students this in the past, and it seems that consistently, usually, when students start taking my classes, usually within the first month or second month, they start noticing that they're able to, yeah, understand TV shows and movies better. Uh, was it the same for you? Like, from your experience, how long did it take for you to realize, more or less, because maybe you don't know exactly, but more or less, how long did it take you to start noticing that you were listening a lot better understanding a lot better mm, i remember was um after two months yeah. i realized yes that i um the three the third month maybe i really shocked <laughs> because really? i realized that oh wow i understood everything yeah yes so, well, actually, yeah of course i don't really have this question written down but i'm curious because I, I sometimes I tell people and sometimes it's surprising to them people that aren't my students people who don't want to take classes uh, sometimes they ask me well, actually even students who want to take classes with me they ask me how long uh, do they need to take classes and I tell them that I have students who've studied with me for one year some have studied with me for two years I think I have one or two students who've studied with me for three years and I guess is that what for you would that be like one of the biggest reasons you would tell people that you know, people study with me for such a long time is because they get results and they're able to actually see that they're they're improving from the classes. Uh, sorry, I, I don't understand the question. Yes, yeah, because because you told me like after three months you're like you're really mm -hmm. shocked. You're really shocked mm -hmm. that you were able to understand. Mm -hmm. Like for you, I, I'm I'm trying to understand because students they study they study with me for a long time. Is that a big motivating factor? Is that a big reason that somebody like you takes classes with me for a long time? Mm -hmm. Is because like you're you're actually able to see results and like wow, this this really works. If yes. I take classes with Prof. Kyle, then I'm able to understand English a lot better. And yes, yes, because uh, maybe my I I have to practice more, but um, uh, let me explain. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Maybe I don't uh, 
to learn a lot of things you, you want to teach, but I see I I, I see a, a lot of uh, uh, um, yes more results more like if um, no the English is not uh, difficult it's easy oh, okay yeah so mm -hmm. yeah yeah because yeah, I guess some some people they study in other places and yeah they, they say themselves like English is so difficult that it doesn't make any sense it's it's frustrating for them. But with my classes, it doesn't feel as difficult. It feels more, it feels more fun. Yes. Feels, yeah, a lot easier. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's good to know for sure. And, and for people, so for people who want to take or thinking about taking classes or taking a course, how would, in like one or two sentences or three or a little speech, it's, it's your choice. How, how would you describe the Profe Kyle method? Methodology. How, how would you describe it in your own words? How would you describe it to somebody who says, Betty, Prof. Kyle, he seems like a strange Canadian professor. What's his methodology like? Mm, okay. Maybe if it's some Mexican people, I okay. say, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember when the teachers in uh, elementary school explained uh -huh. something? It, it was very difficult. Uh, so that is perfect guy. Perfect guy is like a, a teacher of elementary school <laughs> uh, to to teaching uh, the with a um, nice uh, mm -hmm. nice activities and uh, and he understood you and understand mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. like you and so is. I think it's the better methodology because it is like uh, the methodology of we know because mm -hmm. we uh, learn a lot of things, uh, the good things mm -hmm. uh, in, in the same, yes, in the kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because ele elementary school teachers are usually a lot more, I think the word that Latinos like to use is didactic. Didact yes. Didactical, yeah. I guess elementary yeah. school teachers they're they're friendlier with students. They explain things and they explain difficult things in simple terms, so that's easier to understand. Yes. Yeah, and they have exactly. a better connection with their students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, that, I think it's the first time I've heard that. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, okay. So kind of like a elementary school methodology for adults learning English. Yes, yes, right. kind of yes. <laughs> yes, okay. I'll I'll use that in the future for future advertisements yes it's uh, yeah. elementary school methodology for mexicans but this yeah, is just for mexicans nice. maybe other Latinos like won't it. understand all right and in your own personal opinion most of my students are young professional yeah they, they, they like you you know about 30 years old professional but for you yeah who would you recommend my classes yeah, so or my courses to who who would you recommend them to uh, all my friends, uh, my brother, uh, yes, all my friends. So yeah, for for anybody, you know, anybody, anybody, yes. anybody who anybody. wants to learn English. Yes, exactly. As long as they have the right attitude. Well, do you think my classes wouldn't work for somebody? Uh, maybe that's a better that's a better question. Who wouldn't my classes work for? Mm. And uh, I think um, my husband. <laughs> they want to work for your husband? <laughs> yes. And well, why not? Why not your husband? Uh, because uh, he knows English. But, oh, uh, knows why. I guess if you know English, you don't need to take English classes. You know. Good point. Good point, Betty. So if you know English, you don't have to take English classes with me. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. And actually, I think that's most of the questions I had for you about my methodology. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, Betty, uh, is there any final comments you would have about the way I teach the classes that you took with me? Anything else you think people should know about uh, what I do? Mm, okay, yes. Uh, this is not an advertising commercial, <laughs> but well, I, I think... Actually, yeah, because uh, Betty, you work the, in advertising. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But, 
so yeah, okay. this is not. Okay. But I think the methodology of Rafael is is the best because um, he knows uh, to teach uh, Latin people. Latin, mm -hmm. yes. It's not for American people. It's not for Canadian people. It's not for other people. Not for Russians. It's for, not for Chinese. Yeah, no. Not for Japanese. Exactly. It's for it's for Mexicans. It's for Colombian people. It's for Argentinian people. Mm -hmm. uh, all people in America Latina. Um, yeah. Not not from Spain. Like I could I could probably teach people from Spain, but I don't know anything about Spain. Spain, I don't I don't know anything about that. Yeah. All right. For Latinos. Well, yes, that's exactly Latinos. that's exactly my plan, Betty. My plan was always to teach English to Latinos. So it's working. My plan is working. Good. Yes, you yes. And I, I always thought you are a Latin people were were like a, a born Latino? in in body of Canadian people, but oh, you are a Latin. Oh, American. you think so? You think yes. I'm not actually Canadian, so I I have a Canadian body, but a Latino soul. All right. Yes. All right. Maybe. I'm glad. Yes. I'm glad because, you know, sometimes Latinos, you know, Argentinians, they call me pelotudo or, or you know, maybe some Mexicans call me pendejo. Or, but I think that's normal Latin America, right? Latinos are always yes. calling each other names. So that's normal. That's a good yes. sign. That's a good sign if they call me, they call me names. All right. Good. Well, Betty, yeah, that's all the questions I have. So thank you very much for telling people about what I do. For helping us out. Oh, I guess no. Actually, I have a few more questions. Maybe one or two more questions. Uh, what advice? Because you've been learning English now for a while, not not too long, because you only did a little bit in high school, a little bit after university, and then with my classes. But uh, what advice would you give somebody who is learning English? Is there anything that you've learned uh, learning English that you wish you knew uh, when you started? Um. Yes, maybe the best advice um, I can uh, give is uh, see uh, your favorite um, TV shows in English and practice and practice and practice and not frustrating because yeah, don't get frustrated. Yeah, that sure. is a big uh, obstacle, I think. But um, practice, listen, uh, to repeat, uh, and I'm think that in the United States or Canadian, the people uh, the people doesn't um, speak Spanish, so you can <laughs> speak English fast in the in the first time. Yes, so don't worry, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think uh, in the past, some people, some people have asked me if Canadians speak Spanish. It was one of the strangest questions I ever got. I said, no, Canadians don't <laughs> speak Spanish. No, we don't speak Spanish at all. Yes. So yes, if you're wondering if you can speak Spanish in Canada, well, no, no, not in Canada. You got to, you got to speak English or, fr or French if you go to Quebec. But yeah, so your, be your best piece of advice is you just stay consistent, always be practicing and and I totally understand you. I've learned languages too. You're frustrated sometimes. You feel like you're not progressing. You feel like you yes. don't understand something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, the thing I tell myself is this. You're going to be frustrated. Just ignore it. Yeah, the best thing is just kind of just ignore it. Just keep on pushing forward. You're going to get results if you keep on working. You keep on practicing. For sure. All right. Yeah. And, well, I guess and one more question. Kind of similar. I don't know if you're going to give a different answer. If you don't really have an answer, it's okay. But is there anything that you wish you would have started doing earlier? Like you wish you would have, I don't know, started watching series sooner, or you wish you would have, uh, I don't know, started reading sooner? Is there anything you wish you would have started doing sooner when you started learning English? Yes, I wish, yes, uh, to see more uh, TV shows in English and speak with other people in other countries. Yeah. Yes, I wish. Yeah, I think, yeah, so the biggest thing is just start using English as soon as you can. I think the same thing with me with Spanish. I was always, for the first three years, I didn't speak any Spanish. I was really self-conscious. Yeah, just, just start using it, just start using it, see what happens. 
it's better to get it out of the way right away then next year next year next year don't yes. procrastinate don't procrastinate yeah. mm -hmm. yes exactly all right good well betty i think that's it for now uh i think you're at work right now so i think you're done work so you're gonna go home yes well, thank you so much for your time thanks for talking to us from work from the office uh we'll let you get home and of course anybody watching this if you have any questions for me maybe have a extra question for for Betty, you can leave a comment below, or whatever you want. And yeah, again, thank you so much, Betty. And uh, I'll talk to you in the thank future, you. okay? All right. Yes. Bye, Betty. Good day. Bye.